And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred's Fortune. We're back to doing some sweet looking donation decks. We're back to ranked, you know, all that kind of stuff. Our normal schedule after the tournament yesterday. Uh, we are going to have Meme Tier Monday tomorrow. Um, and uh, then back to rank donation decks on Tuesday and, uh, you know, another rank decks. And then um, we'll have the uh, champion spotlight night on Wednesday night. And remember last Wednesday we uh, did the random champion and we determined it was going to be Maokai. So we're going to have Maokai decks, competitive Maokai decks on Wednesday. So that'll be interesting. So I'll be working on that in the next couple of days, um, working into Maokai. If you got any good Maokai decks... You know, feel free, like anybody watching later on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment with it and, and talk about it there. Anyway, first we're doing Kindred's Fortune. This is going to be a Kindred Misfortune deck, where it's going to be um, a deck kind of based around the undying and vulnerable. A lot of different like ways to give our opponent's cards vulnerable, and because you want to be able to challenge your opponent's units with the undying. We have one Citrus Courier to be able to rally. We got Sheriff Laria Rose. They'll be given everything vulnerable. And then a good amount of interaction um, and ways to sacrifice units like Curse Keeper and, of course, the Undying. Because, you know, we can use like our Ravenous Butcher and uh, Mask Mother and that kind of stuff to sacrifice the Undying, the Wings and the Wave. Um, and that could be pretty good, especially if we have like an Undying that's like a 5-5 five five or a 6-6 six six, and then we Mask Mother it. We can get a pretty big Mask Mother with Fearsome. We also have Stalking Shadows be able to help the un find the Undying and, and just find whatever else we need. Like maybe we get like a Citrus Courier and get to double rally with the Stalking Shadows. Also, like with the Ephemeral copies that Stalking Shadows makes, you can use Mask Mother and eat that Ephemeral copy, or, you know, you can just sacrifice that Ephemeral copy to, like, these other cards like Ravenous Butcher and stuff like that. So that works out well also. And yeah, and so then um, Kindred, of course, since we're going to be slaying our own unit a lot with all those ways to sacrifice our own units, we have a Kindred in play, we slay our own unit, and then we mark... Um, the weakest enemy as well and hopefully kill that enemy at the end of the round um, and then we'll just be attacking with the like it's super easy to attack with the undying and so just attack a bunch and level up misfortune and just get the other um, you know just the misfortune abilities for each time we attack so looks like a pretty fun deck to begin with our day kindred's fortune let's go play five games over in ranked I wanted to ask you about your deck it looked a little it looked like a meme tier deck instead of rank. I think. The Orcalista deck, but we'll talk about it after the game here. What do we have? We have Aurelia Azir. Cool, cool, cool. Let's keep Hired Gun and Mulligan the rest. I could kind of see keeping the Glimpse Beyond. Yeah, so I see you have a tried I see you have a built around like Callista plus the Sejuani boat, uh, Tuscarator. But they don't work together. Let's go with... Let's go with Hired Gun. Gonna take some damage. Azir's command! Sand and blood. Not my first gunfight. Our sun rises. Okay, let's. Yeah, because the the Tusk Raider is a plunder ability, so whenever you put it into play, um, cool. Got rid of that thing. Whenever if you had put it into play with Callista, it wouldn't do anything. Plunder has to be casting it. Where are you? Let's go and play both. What's that noise? I'm just gonna pass right now. We could glimpse beyond right now, but if I save the two mana, I can go like Kindred glimpse. Well, now we have Ravenous Butcher, of course. But... Um... It's not like a great spot for Blighted Caretaker. If I don't play Blighted Caretaker right now, ugh. if I don't play it right now, like we're not gonna play it for a while, right? Because we're gonna play Kindred next round. So I guess I might as well just play it right now. And just get some blocks in with it. Oh, fresh soil. 
Yeah, round round two, we have a blocker and we're still down to thir to thirteen. Round two. After blocking their two one. I wouldn't necessarily say this deck is exactly fair. Never one. Without the other. My name echoes through every rock, every canyon. Every canyon. You dare. I think that they are going to be, um, I think they're going to be, I think they're having homecoming up, but if, if they have like homecoming also with like all this other stuff, I'm going to be sad. Okay, no homecoming, that's good. That's very good. So we get to mark his ear. That's great. I picked up that droplet. So, of course, his ear levels up and they hit me for a million damage, but. I don't know why I did the mark thing again, but. Alright, we'll go block. Block. Taking five. Four. I can't afford to have the plus three plus one spell kill Kindred. Chomp. Chompers. Ooh. That could actually be quite useful. Because I can... I can basically stop this Greenblade duo from hitting me whenever it attacks. Yeah, otherwise we would have been dead. I don't know why I marked that thing. That's too bad that it marked that other thing that just got obliterated, and and so we don't get to don't get to level up Kindred. That's too bad. <laughs> These blade dances are killing me. These blade dances are killing me. What is waiting? Death. Not my first gun fight. Yeah, how does I guess it's just ran I guess it's just random of which one it marks. The only explanation. Oh. 
So I'm down to three. Oh, I marked that thing. Lame. All in the day's work. That was a big black spear right there. This is looking pretty good. I think we're gonna have this. Kindred kind of took over this game, right? Like Kindred killed the Azir. You know, the the uh, quick attack was able to kill the Green Blade duo. Killed a bunch of stuff, honestly. You know, because they, they leveled up. And... Yeah, Kindred dominated that game. That killing the Azir is where that game turned. Playing Zoe Shivana. Playing against some dragons. Alright, gonna keep the Undying and probably the Curse Keeper as well. I guess we can just shake down. Yeah, might as well shake down. Shake down works very well with both of these. Your Callista Smooth Solo's days are over? No. How do I want to do this? We have so many options. We have so many options. No, dragons are really good. And yeah, they have tons of nexus healing and they, they play great defense. I'll be surprised if we win this game. And they also have hush that just, you know, hush against the undying is rough. Guess we're going to have like caretaker next round. I kind of think I just go wings in the wave right now. On this. And I'm going to shake down the Undying. Perfect. Got him. They're trying to cheat with their Equinox. Yep. Uh, I'll play you. That egg. Did it move? Run them through. Uh Sorry, my dog's just scratching my chair. Sometimes she just does that, and it's so annoying. Gifts from the sky. You're damaging the chair. I know you're just a big sweetheart. She's right here. <laughs> so we're going to... Challenge, 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 challenge. Okay. So we're going to have you challenge you. You challenge you. Hush is still just like really annoying if they just hush. Because like if I if I have the Undying challenge the protege, they can just hush the Undying. And so I'm glad that um, I'm pretty glad that card's gone. You know the the single combat's out of their hand before I play Kindred. That's good. They're looking for more Equinox. Yeah, you back my star. Never 
No fly. dragons. No dragons in hand. Interesting. Bill's a mess, but I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. I could, like, double sharp side on this messenger would be pretty bad for me. But I guess they still, everything else dies. Yeah, I should have had my, I should have had the 3-1 challenge that, that thing, because it was kind of obvious that they were going to fight there, and then I could have had the Undying. Challenge elsewhere. Her light is our sword, her warmth our armor. Forge ahead! Give them a chance! My saplings. I don't I know I could have you know obviously blocked and had them not gain the five life, but I'd rather just get the plus one plus one on this undying. on the kindred. Don't really play anything that good to kill. And I wanted to save Vile, you know, Vile Feast. That's a problem. I said I shouldn't have played the Kindred when I did. Yeah, Dragon Chow is amazing. Wish our deck could protect Kindred. But there's it's just not really possible with these regions. We just have to draw more. Gonna play more things before I share a Flareyet Rose, but I have to mask Mother of the Undying, but then that does open up again another single combat. You know, if they have yet another fight spell, I open that up. Um, I guess so. Be able to fight that thing. To claim. The chase begins. The 
This rose has thorns. <laughs> Gosh, they do have more fight spells. That's really bad. Well, that went very bad for me. But we still have both undyings. Who does not know the name They're gonna keep on you know being the undying and everything. Alright, got that out of their hand. Fifth fight spell. Lady Elise, where are you? Okay, but we're still doing good with the help of these undyings. We're down to four. Another day guarding the walls. And our our glimpse beyonds have been really helpful, right? We've drawn six cards from glimpse beyonds. Oh wow. That's a card. That's just game over. And there we go. Okay, we are two and oh what a win! against Zoe Shivana. They didn't have Shivana, of course, but still. What a win. Sheriff Lariat Rose was incredible in that game. Okay, playing against the same kind of deck. They have a really in soul this time. Which if they're playing really in soul means they're playing Eclipse Dragon. All of that sounds pretty tough. I mean these cards are really good to have access to. Yeah, like those cards are just really good to have access to. I just don't have units right now, but I guess that's what Stalking Shadows is for, right? To find units. Lady Elise, where are you? Yeah, that's true. We haven't seen Misfortune at all. Yes, yeah, so this looks like this is going to be a, a tougher version of this kind of deck. You know, if they go that big, it's going to be difficult. Who does not know the name Laurent? Oh, they weren't expecting callers. Run them through. Aha. I want to shake down and like challenge the Dragon Chow. Yeah, because we, we weren't going to get lucky in our opponent not have Shivana two games in a row, right? That probably wasn't happening two games in a row. Yeah, th this was a great curve. Protege into Shivana into Screeching Dragon. That's really tough to beat. So, good game. We gotta have this happen. No, stop having fight spells. Just let it happen.
Maybe they don't have another fight spell. One can hope. They retreat. One can hope, I guess. Yeah, I guess I should have gave the Shivana vulnerable. Did find a misfortune. So that's a first. that thing. Kindred eating up dragons is pretty hot. No. Gotta figure out still how to deal with this. Aurelian soul. But that was pretty cool. They still have eight cards over there because of Targon. <laughs> Alright, so they had, uh, you know, Protege, Shivana, Screeching Dragon, 3, 4, 5, then Fight Spell 6. Uh, you know, like basically like multiple Fight Spells, so that, that was 6. And then Eclipse Dragon 7, and really Soul 8. That's just a perfect hand. So sometimes that's going to happen. Sometimes that's going to happen. Cool. I guess we'll just simply go ahead and discard our Stalking Shadows. Seems kind of fair. Forward in the name of the Solari. Fortune favors the bold. Um, no, there is no none of the four mana sacrifice draw two, actually. That card is not in here. I assume that was not directed at me, Zoe. We draw Sheriff Larry at Rose. Like higher gun. Like Sheriff Larry at Rose. Like we need to hit that like with Stock of Shadows. We can get we can get this early and soul vulnerable. Have our undying challenge it, and then them not have hush or anything. My, how they stare. Okay, cool. So to have no hush, no stun, no fight spell, no pu no pump spell. Basically, any spell in their deck is a problem. If this it's equinox or stun. We're dead. I would, I would kind of think they're only playing one Aurelian Soul. Maybe they have two in their deck. Hmm. I can't kill it anyway. Fresh out of mercy. Time to make some coins. You cannot sway me. Do we have like an atrocity to try to kill him? Fall, heretic. No. I've given up 
chasing this one. Kitty Dexterity, thank you for the gifted subs. I do love an audience. I really appreciate that. Okay. Alright, so we weren't going to win all of those, you know, in a row against that deck, but man, what an amazing, like, you know, they just had a perfect hand, and so, we lost. No shame in that. Okay, so Soraka Tom Kench is a hush deck. They also, they also want to play defense quite a bit, so attacking into their stuff isn't great for us. It's all about Starspring, right? Like, if they have Starspring, I guess, and Tom Kench. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do we... Yeah, this... I think this may be a really bad matchup for us. We can't get rid of the Star Spring, right? Like I was that's what I was trying to think of. I don't think we have anything in our deck to get rid of Star Spring. <laughs> of course they have it immediately. If I, if I had to say, like, what's an off-meta deck that's a really bad matchup for the Undying, I think I would say Soraka and Starspring. <laughs> that'd, that'd probably be choice number one. They have crusty, or they have astral protection, of course. So they were attacking, like wanting to attack and block and stuff with misfortune because they have astral protection. This does perfect. I was gonna say this bait. This, yeah, you know, I'm trying to like, I'm baiting hush from, like, yes, my undying is dead forever, but we got them to use the hush, so now they don't have mana for astral protection anymore. So now we can actually kill Soraka. That's huge. Stars. Vengeance can be. Pretty great, also, because that's an actual removal spell. So that that was big time killing that Soraka. No Tom Kench, just don't do that. Guess I'm casting. Guess I'm casting. Success. Get you noticed around here. So my playing, my playing vengeance, and then. Like I'm playing, I'm probably playing Vengeance next round. So it's like, do I hold up like Glimpse Beyond, Stalking Shadows next round, or do I get this Curse Keeper and play? And I think I just, I think I pass. Oh, I don't require menu. Huh. Now I kind of want to do Curse Keeper, Wings in the Way, but then I don't have mana for Vengeance. Cause you gotta think about Bastion, of course. I don't know, this is... Bastion costs 4 mana, so I know, I know they have Astral Protection in hand, and Bastion also costs 4 mana. Okay. That's good. Again, they don't have... Ooh. Six Fearsome? So right now, all they can have for protection really is uh, Guiding Touch and Pale Cascade. Right? So I think Ravenous Butcher plus Black Spear should be able to kill that, as far as I know. 
Sunblessed Vigor. Oh, that's a good call. Sunblessed Vigor. Okay, so that means I have to go with the four power. Okay. And the 3-2 Ravenous Butcher doesn't really do anything against the Krusty Codger, so we'll eat that. Man, this went really well for us, being able to kill Soraka and Tom Kench. The the Undying and the Curse Keeper baiting out the Hushes. Okay, so I guess they had all three Hush. Good news, they can't have any more, I suppose. I wasn't expecting the third one. But we should be... Like, we have two Stalking Shadows to re refuel. is interesting. I think my opponent's given up. Yeah, they've given up. They've given up! They We took out the Soraka and the Tom Kench. They had those Astral Protections. They needed to wait. They they used Hush when they could not use Hush. Like, they they had that game won if they just were more patient. Alright. Alright, we're back to Aurelia Azir. We did defeat Aurelia Azir earlier, but we got pretty fortunate with our, our Kindred taking down an Azir. I like that we got Kindred again. I like the Vile Feast. I like the Misfortune. Chum the Waters is also honestly not a bad card. Do we need anything earlier right now? Because we could play Vile Feast on two, Chum the Waters on three. You know, because we have six mana by round three. Um, we have the attack token round three. I don't like it. I think I think this could do just fine. I could see mulliganing the Misfortune, honestly. Like maybe the Misfortune just doesn't isn't that necessary. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm kind of hoping that that I can have my Chum the Waters kill Azir on three, right? Like, that they would just play Azir on three, not thinking that I'll be able to kill it, and then we surprise him with Chum the Waters. That is my hope. Alright, so they play Azir. Not to forget, but to remember. But to remember. Tis worth. Looks like you're getting a little long in the tooth over there, Aurelia. The likely outcome is a bounce spell with them not playing anything on the round on round two, but still worth. Okay, not expecting that. Hmm. Cool. So we got to kill Aurelia and another card. <laughs> not only just Aurelia. We got to take out another card as well. Never one without the other. Okay, so my plan here, I have the 4-3 to block the 2-2, make it like really difficult for them to attack with the 2-2. Um, I want to save 2 mana. Well, that's great that I just used that. I want to save 2 mana for um, after I play Kindred. I want Kindred plus Glimpse Beyond. I'm using the Vile Feast first. You know, like I could have Glimpse Beyond there and draw 2, but using the Vile Feast first gives me the Spiderling, where I still have like the Spiderling that's like a really good thing to sacrifice. Where we go. They retreat. 
That's not saying that I, I could have seen just mulliganing the misfortune for my opener. I probably sh should have, especially for how everything else has played out. I am trying to kind of I'm trying to maximize Kindred in this matchup, with them only having Homecoming as like the only answer to Kindred. So that's not not very many cards in the whole deck. I think this is a as we saw like the first game. I think this is a very good Kindred matchup. When rhythm takes hold, there is no time for fear. How do I know? How do we know which one we are which one we are marking? We do not know which one we mark. It's definitely just marks one of these one ones. Just gonna get rid of that two two. Closer to the uh, Kindred level up. Spin around, slow down. Nine. Hours. So that will level up Kindred. Blocking like this. They could have the plus three, plus one card, I guess. Which will kill Kindred, though. And that would be quite bad for me if they did. But because if I if I block here, yeah, if I block here, we mark it, but that doesn't. But then we don't slay it, so it doesn't level up Kindred. Yay! No plus three, plus one. You're a deer wolf. That egg. Did it move? What's a deer wolf? It's like a wolf that can run really fast. Into formation. I'd follow you to the black heart of Noxus itself. Lady Elise, where are you? <laughs> yeah, sparring soon it is obnoxious. <laughs> the dance for two hearts. United in war. Foolish. Please, I have connections. I know. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Yeah, not that good. Flow. So look at, at yeah, so look at the blade surge now. Tell me a story, Len. Once a little spirit traveled a long road to the right. were alone. The Remember our ancestors and fight for those who came before us. The same place that all passed to an end. So I cannot put Kindred in front of a really Oh, no blade surge. We were No blade surge. I guess I can. They haven't had like a plus one type card before, but yeah, there we go. Because they didn't, they didn't attack with the other things. They didn't get the blade surge because of um, yeah, they needed to attack with that two one also to get it. Dude, Kindred kind of owns up that matchup. Kindred's great in that matchup because they just they just let you slay a bunch of stuff, and then you just mark things and Kindred levels up. And then once Kindred levels up, each time whenever you slay those things they're marked, you get the plus two plus two. So it's like having double fury. You know how like the fury dragons are going to block in the one ones? Kindred has double fury. Um, so that actually Kindred actually works pretty well in that matchup. We saw it. We saw it do really well in that matchup twice. So how about that? We went four in one in Masters rank with Kindred Misfortune Undying. Wow, we defeated Aurelia Zier twice, Dragons once. Lost to Dragons another time, and then Soraka Tom Kench. I think my Soraka Tom Kench player opponent had the tools to win, but they 
they were too hasty and you know they used their hushes way too fast and didn't protect their champions well enough um especially the soraka I mean, really both of them honestly yeah honestly both of them because tom kench is like unbeatable they would have just protected tom kench um so you know that was fortunate but like so our one loss was the dragon opponent that had the really amazing curve of round three through eight being the perfect exact like exact perfect scripted round three through eight of curving you know like laurent protege um shivana screeching dragon then multiple fight spells the next round and then eclipse dragon aurelian soul like just the the perfect three through eight so that so that's uh so that's really impressive that that was our only loss and we defeated really zero twice we defeated dragons another time especially when they when they didn't draw shivana but they had Zoe and a lot of stuff, and we had that Sheriff was amazing, that other match against the Dragon deck. So cool, it, worked, it went really well. Um, I like having all these ways to slay our own things and mark stuff for Kindred. You can tell, like, Misfortune was really just kind of an afterthought. We basically never used Misfortune, but just the Undying and all these slays and the card advantage, right? You have Glimpse Beyond drawing two, you have Stalking Shadows drawing two, so you got good card advantage there. Um... And then, like, the Vulnerable. The Sheriff with the Vulnerable was clutch. The Hired Gun with the Vulnerable was clutch. And the Shakedown. The Shakedown really helped us win a couple of those times, right? Like, they Equinoxed my Undying, and then we Shakedowned it. I wouldn't mind another one of these Shakedowns, but it's hard to fit everything in. But we, we, the Shakedown was really clutch every time we had it. And, and it's just a one of, and we had it multiple times, and it was really clutch. I could see even more sh Like, I don't... Yeah. Like, we have Vengeance Ruination. I guess Ruination could be good against the Dragons, but it kind of seems not that necessary, the Ruination. Anyway, um, there we go. That's Kindred's Fortune. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Hopefully y'all really enjoyed the video. Um, you know, had a real good record here and ranked this one. Um, yeah, leave those comments. Let me know. Let me know uh, how y'all liked the uh, video. But thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll see you for the next video.